And tonight we have a fabulous lineup for you. Erin, um, I have worked with for two years now uh, from Hames Paint. She has fabulous insight into the world of colour, so I'll introduce her. She'll be our middle speaker. We're going to start with Naomi, who is our newest industry partner. Um, she has quite a bat sheet which I'll go through in a minute, really? which is good. <laughs> and of course, James, who's been with us for a few years now, so hopefully you've had the chance and um, the fun of talking to James in the past. So to start with, Naomi, her big girl voice, is going to come and talk to us in a minute. She is... I think she didn't say big girl pants. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she has been voted top five home stylists in the world. Wow. The world. Uh, she is featured on Interiors Addict and numerous other uh, blogs, investment property mags, um, house, uh, style curator, you name it, she's in it. Uh, she's completed 117 renovation projects herself and is an advisor to a further 250. So quite impressive, uh, extensive use of her design skills. Uh, and of course she's a designer on Channel 10's Changing Rooms if you haven't seen her there as well. So on that introduction, I will introduce the high achieving. <laughs> Thank you for having me here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, tonight I'm here to talk to you guys about kitchen and furniture trends. And I will put the caveat out there up front that for me, a trend is someone's bright idea that actually catches on. Because there are a pile of bright ideas that we all pretty much hate and no one catches on to. So for me, trends are always a bit of a gamble. So tonight I'm gonna to be talking to you from my perspective about what I'm seeing and also, gosh forbid, um, what I'm predicting is going to not only stay, but um, keep coming in in regard to kitchens, furniture um, trends. So let's go. Now I'm a massive believer, our kitchens of yesteryear are gone. They are no longer somewhere that we just prep and store and clean up and more and more our homes are actually no longer, you know, we used to talk about kitchens were to clean up, prep, etc. And then we talked about how they became an entertaining space, yeah? And so if we entertain in it, we do some homework in it, we might have a meeting in it, we might have it as a home office. I actually see them going way further than that and becoming hybrid homes. So there's no longer just a kitchen. You're no longer asked to do a kitchen design, you're actually asked to do an integrated hybrid design with the home. This is obviously um, quite a beautiful version of that where the entire place is integrated together. And it goes without saying that anyone who isn't on board with the smarts, anyone who isn't on board with the e-integration, like whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, it is here to stay. It's like, it's, you know, it's like saying to the kids, get off the phone and decrease your screen time. It's here to stay. And smart integration in our homes is 100% as well. It's not going anywhere. So I see a lot of space integration happening and I believe it's going to become more and more so that we're not going to have pocketed dining rooms and pocketed kitchens and pocketed bathrooms, that they're actually all going to be very integrated and quite hybrid. This is a great example of a really hybrid space where social and function actually blend together. That it's no longer we socialise. You know, remember the, oh, come to the lounge for a wine after dinner. That no longer happens, yeah? Like we socialise and we function. We do our function and our fun. Oh, I like that. We do our function and our fun in the same spaces now, yeah? And so this is a great example of um, you know, huge sliding doors that actually can shut off all the business end of kitchens and make it just this beautiful big entertaining space. So I see all that concealed, however changeable, is the way that our kitchens are heading. And similar with our kitchens, um, I know in that kitchen I mentioned that whole idea of being eco and sustainable and bringing in the old and the new. More and more, that's going to be happening in our furniture trends as well, without doubt. So it's not only about eco reuse, but it's about refreshing. So reupholstering an existing antique or vintage lounge is going to be, I think, more exciting than grabbing a brand new one off the shelf, without doubt. 
the character and the stories. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I believe that our homes talk, our walls talk, our furnished pieces talk, and the conversations that you could have late at night with a room that's created with reused and refurnished and refurbished pieces is much more interesting than ones that were just born. And similarly, this definitely, thank gosh, is not going anywhere, which is the whole concept of our suppliers, eco-recycling. So, for example, there are so many amazing furniture producers right now that are actually utilising refuse that we throw away, whether it's recycled plastic, whether it's industrial sawdust, um, whatever it is to actually create products. I believe that our clients, um, without doubt, if we produce two options to them, and one is insanely eco-friendly and one is without doubt recreating and decreasing landfill, 100% of the time, no, 90% of the time, I believe they're going to be going with that option. And so I see in furniture trends that it's going to be more and more at the forefront of producers' um, minds to be making sure that they're hitting that nail on the head without doubt because it, it's how we're all heading we all want to continue to live in an amazing world and an amazing planet and i believe that most people are going to be supporting that and so i do believe we're going to be seeing that more and more and more so for those who don't know much about Hames paint we are a victorian based company so we started in ballarat which is about an hour from melbourne um, the factory is all still there our office is still there and all the paint still comes straight out of the factory from Ballarat, so it doesn't come from anywhere else in the world, and all our manufacturing products that are in the paint are still all Australian made. So the Paynes family all run it. So browns, again, it's similar to the oranges, that they've got a lot of that red undertone, except for these ones, they've got a bit more of that sort of musty, um, mustardy colour. So they, again, adding that bit of warmth and sort of creates, you know, that nice cozy feel. Um, so we're understanding that technology is taking over, not in bad ways always, um, but it is all about that need to feel connected to our families and our environment is taking the centre stage. Um, they are mostly red based right now, sort of chocolates, beiges, um, whiskies, amber, and then some of these, see that middle one is more that sort of clay, one of that baked clay kind of feel, tans and caramels. Um, yeah, definitely those sort of, everything is earthy based, which is why it's, it makes you feel grounded and at home and at ease, rather than, you know, you're in a bright white house and you're oh. all... <laughs> Looking in the yeah, mirror, right. yeah, yeah. in a bright white house. You know, what colour makes us feel, um, and yeah, I'm so glad that it's starting to now shift and change and making it feel more at home and cosy. And there's so many colours, you can add so much personality with this type of thing. So greens, I think is probably the most prevalent colour that we will be seeing um, from now and the next couple of years, and ranging from your bright lime greens to your sort of sages and forest greens. Um, but the one to look out for is neo-mint. So you, you will be hearing that word a lot with fashion, decor, um, anything interior-wise. Neo-mint is set to be the colour of 2020, a lot of people are saying. Um, I've got a slide of it over here. So it is important. Yes, thank you, mint there. So just like the uh, millennial pink, it came and seemed to open the doors for any colour to be popular amongst both genders. No, Neo Mint has the softness and can be translated into many of the design <coughs> industries. The colour embodies a forward thinking and an optimistic mood as a new decade begins, is what everyone is saying. Um, I think for interiors wise, especially broad wall application, it is going to be a bit more muted though, um, like the top left hand image and even on the right. Um, so not as um, lolly minty, just yeah, again, grayed off with a bit more depth, I guess. Um, so yeah, lots of green around. So the forest greens, like the one I have back here, and these sort of mossy greens, plenty of that, even avocado, um, sage, <coughs> everything in green is here. 
Um, thanks so much for coming along, and I've got to say it's nice because some of you I get to see at different events now, so thanks so much for coming along. I often say, and I was down in uh, Denfair last week, um, that events even for me, and, and I know that you both do a lot of events, even when I'm going to events it's sometimes as much to be seen as it is to see, and when you're seeing each other the networking here is so important for you to understand, because I remember um, going to events and not knowing anyone and being that, believe it or not, I wasn't quiet, but I was still, like I didn't know anyone, and you know, it took a while to connect with people and knowing a face and coming and saying hello, so always come and say hello to me, I hope that I never snub anyone I talk to the traffic lights. No. Um, <laughs> but tapware, now tapware is your jewellery and you can mix the finishes. So this beautiful thing here, you know, a, a beautiful wall mount bath filler is really a big statement. It's stronger gold than what I tend to use with my clients, but it's important to know that it's right for the right client. Um, slightly um, bold, um, slightly Dubai, but it's a beautiful finish and it's a great because it's a hotel experience. Um, Alexander & Co, if you don't know them, you should now. Bankheads, you're talking about built-in cabinetry. Really gorgeous, beautiful um, tones. And I looked at that and I thought, I've got these shoes that I wear to death, so it's still working. But again, the brown tones, yeah. We, <laughs> the brown leather tones, beautifully mixed um, with um, gold metals, you know, with copper, um, uh, with brass. And so it's just a beautiful finish. And then obviously, t uh, natural stone down here and stepped up materials, but then the timber here has been chosen to add a detail. So really great finishes. Look at the antique on the left, it's like Nana's piece of furniture that's been passed down but it's re it's new. But beautiful edge detail, you know, that double little edging which is quite old in a kitchen style but it's all coming back. Um, beautiful off-centre tap there and a little round bowl, so quite, do you like it? Yeah. I, I love it. Um, so if you, yeah, beautiful. And that classic goose neck, so really quite classic in shape, but you know, they do them in the zips as well. And just a really nice little light fitting, attention to detail that's been collected. Um, so really nice items. Um, what's also interesting here on the left is it's so passive and it's very similar to the bathroom that I showed you at the beginning. Yeah. Can you see where I go? I brought it back again. <laughs> Nothing by fake here. But again, beautiful metal here with an you know, age edging on the mirror. So that mirror could be antique that's handed down to, from Nana or Nonna. Um, and then I've got the aged tap here and a bit of the gold here, but you know, more aged um, black or possibly the pewter in the door handle. So mixing metals, as, as Naomi said, I completely agree. Beautiful texture on the floor, but it only goes so high. So great way to use an expensive product in a minimal way. This one here is the re-adage. I had to look at this when we were checking it out. It was so beautiful. Um, it's the remake of the, the Erskineville Hotel where Priscilla where the drag queens all used to be. Sandra used to be that, maybe too many years ago. Imperial, where you part? Just go for it, yeah, Imperial. Um, so in Imperial, where Priscilla was, and they've got the Priscilla room, and these your colours, these beautiful blues with the reds, this strong clay, you know, the, the plummy tones in the, in the upholstery, but great clay, beautiful metalwork as well, and natural stone. It's sort of all happening in there in such an ostentatious way. It might be a bit hard for Mrs. Jones's lounge room, um, but you can use an essence of it and understand how the colours play. Beautiful? Yes. And you know, chandelier's off to the side, how gorgeous.